Hello and welcome back to the guillotined 18th century chemist theater. In the last couple lessons, we've been talking a lot about Lewis dot two-dimensional structures, and we've been talking about the three-dimensional structures that are formed from those Vesper or Vesper, as some people who like to pronounce things correctly call it. <laughs> and so uh, in, in the last lesson, I talked about uh, the six geometries that you'll see when you're dealing with up to four clouds. Uh, and I, I listed examples of each one, but I thought it would be nice to, to see what those look like in regards to actual Lewis dots and actual 3D structures. So what we'll do is we'll run through each of these and show you the Lewis dot, and then we'll show you the 3D structure for each and how to draw those. Because you don't really want to stick with ball, ball and stick. Um, you want to move on and show the bonds that are relevant to the individual molecules. So anyway, so let's jump into carbon dioxide here. Um, so I drew the basic structure there, given 16 ele uh, electrons, I'm going to use four to make the single bond single bond. Again, I got those uh, valence electron numbers straight from the periodic table. Carbon has four, oxygen has six, so that's where I got those 16 electrons. And so once you make the single bonds, you'll start sprinkling unshared pairs around. You can put them where you want, it's not going to really matter. Um, even if yours looks a little different than mine, we're going to run into the same problem, and that's that we don't have enough electrons. Now the way I drew it, carbon was happy, it had a full octet, but both oxygens fell short. So given my drawing, um, the only way that we're going to solve this problem is to have carbon share its, its unshared pairs. Um, and so it will take a pair and give it to each of the oxygens. Now remember, carbon still gets credit for those, um, but now so does oxygen. So that's going to get oxygen to six, and it's going to get, uh, well, it's going to get oxygen to eight each, um, and the carbons to eight. Um, by six, I mean that in terms of formal charge, uh, you can consider oxygen having six electrons around it if it splits the bonds. And so since it started with six valence electrons, that would give it a zero formal charge. The carbon's also happy because it has a formal charge of zero, given the fact that if it splits the bonds, it has four electrons, and it started with four. So that's, that's why this is an ideal structure as opposed to a single bond, triple bond, because it won't have that formal charge of zero uh, all the way across. So the 3D structure of a linear molecule is very easy. If you have two clouds, or as some people call them, centers of electron density um, around that carbon, uh, then uh, it's going to be a linear structure. It's going to be 180 degrees apart, and so you're done. Um, now what I like to do sometimes is I like to maybe shift the electrons out like that. That's a nice touch, uh, because you know they are still clouds. Now they have uh, terminal atoms have no effect on the geometry, um, on what's on, on outside of them, because they're unshared pairs. Um, so we don't really have to do anything with those. And in fact, a lot of people will take them off. Um, so don't be surprised if you see uh, Vesper structures missing unshared pairs. Uh, I, I don't encourage you to do that as an, a beginning student. You, you probably just learned how to draw Lewis dot. So I, I would not recommend that you pitch those yet. Um, and I won't in any of my drawings. But uh, you, you'll see it out there. So when we get to three clouds then, uh, we're dealing with the same sort of thing. Um, if we have formaldehyde, and we've already done this structure before, but we can go through it one more time, we would put the atoms down. Remember, carbon's going to want to be in the center, and then everybody will build around that based on the idea of how many bonds they like to make. And so we have 12 electrons. We're going to use up six to make the single bonds, and then we'll give out the remaining six as unshared pairs. Now, the way I drew it, uh, oxygen once again has a problem. I don't know what problem I have with oxygen, but I keep shorting oxygen. And so everybody else is happy in terms of getting the uh, full outer shells they want. Hydrogen each has two. Carbon has eight, but oxygen short. And so, again, what carbon will do is it will share its unshared pair and make oxygen happy too. And so, again, if you were to go through formal charge by formal charge, everybody's happy. Um, they all are actually back to the same number of valence electrons they started with if you split the bonds down the middle. So several ways that you can look at bonds. Um, don't get the confused, again, with oxidation uh, states. Um, that's really a winner-take-all look at bonds, um, which is useful for figuring out um, faux charge in, in dealing with compounds, but not really useful for these kind of molecular drawings. So if I have three clouds, that's going to give me a trigonal planar geometry. I can see all the atoms, and so it's going to be very simple to make that 3D. All I have to do is just make the bond angle 120 degrees. Super easy. Okay, and there's one more situation that we will have to run into uh, with three clouds, and that's if one of these clouds is an unshared pair. And that'll happen with our friend ozone, which again, we've talked about before. And so I'm going to have 18 electrons with three oxygens. I'm going to use up four to make the single bond single bond. And then again, you just sprinkle, sprinkle electron pairs around like in a little electron pair fairy. And depending on how you draw it, different people are going to be happy. The way I drew it, the two oxygens on the right all have their full shells. 
uh, but the oxygen on the left does not. So the center oxygen, the central oxygen here will share. And so he does. Now, if you were to go through formal charge with this, um, it's not ideal, but it's the best that you're going to get with ozone. Everybody's got a full eight electrons, so that's that's where we are. Um, so sometimes you just can't get everybody to a zero formal charge. Now, don't forget that whenever you have an electron uh, pair uh, making a double bond that could have gone somewhere else, uh, you have a resonance structure, and you, and you should be able to identify those and then write the equivalent structures without somebody telling you to do that. Remember that neither one of those exists. The actual is a blend of the two. And so what happens in a 3D structure is, uh, again, this is three clouds, so we're going to go into a, a trigonal uh, planar geometry, but since you don't see it all, um, we will call it simply bent because it looks more like a boomerang now because technically you don't see the unshared pair, especially if we were to strip off all the unshared pairs like people often do with 3D modeling. And so I would have less than 120 degrees because that unshared pair is going to squeeze it in a little bit. So there you go, still not that hard to draw. And so the last situations we have are with four clouds. And the only thing that makes that tricky is you've got to make it look 3D. And so we'll start with the classic uh, methane. Uh, we've got eight electrons to deal with. We're going to use all of them up when we make the four single bonds. So we're already done. Everybody's where they need to be. Carbon's at eight. Each of the hydrogen's at four. Everybody has a formal charge of zero. Fantastic. And so we have four clouds. And so that gives us what's called a tetrahedral structure. Now, how do you draw a 3D structure on a piece of paper? Uh, it's, it's easy. Uh, you use something called the wedge and the staircase. And I, and I tell my students always, 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 if you have four clouds, to draw a wedge and a staircase. The wedge represents the one coming out of the plane at you, and the staircase represents the one going back into the plane away from you. Now, some people might draw these a little differently with zigzag lines or something like that, but just try to make the, get the angles about 109.5 in a three-dimensional picture, <laughs> which is not the easiest thing to do. But as long as you have a wedge and a staircase, no matter what, you're going to be just fine. And that's it. You just made a, a, a tetrahedral structure. So quickly, we'll burn through the other two examples here um, of four clouds with either one unshared pair or two. And so we used ammonia, uh, not ammonia. Uh, if I have eight electrons, five from nitrogen and three from each of the hydrogens, I've got eight electrons. And so three single bonds and an unshared pair makes everybody happy. Okay. And so again, in my... Um, 3D structure of this. I'm going to draw a wedge and a staircase. You can put whatever you want. The, the four sides are completely equivalent. You can get any real way of, of looking at it from spinning it around, but the way I decided to draw it is I decided to put the two hydrogens, two of the hydrogens on the wedge and the staircase. You could certainly put an unshared pair if you wanted to. That's totally fine. I, I do drop the lines from the unshared pair if, uh, if they're on the two that are just lines, not the wedge and the staircase. But that's totally up to you. If you wanted to have a line on top and then tack on the unshared pair, I don't think anybody's going to get in a fight with you. And so that no longer looks like a tetrahedral. That looks like what's called a trigonal pyramidal. Think of a little pyramid um, with two people on top of it. Now, trigonal pyramidal and trigonal planar are always messed up by students. Um, but try not to. Uh, a trigonal planar, you have three clouds that are all flat. If you have four clouds, it, it, it's, it cannot be flat anymore. You're always going to have a wedge and a staircase in the drawing. So try to remember that. that that's the common mistake, is to mess up trigonal planar and trigonal pyramidal. And this bond angle will be less than 109.5 because of that unshared pair, squeezing it in. And the last one we talked about, and again, water is another example of this, but I used uh, hydrogen sulfide here. We have eight valence electrons. Uh, we make two single bonds. That uses up four, and we have two unshared pairs left for sulfur. Again, sulfur is happy with that. It's got a formal charge of zero since it's uh, got six bonding, and it started with six, and each of the hydrogen are both happy also. Uh, so again, lots of different ways to look at it to see that they're happy. And so this 3, 3D drawing is once again going to use a wedge and a staircase to represent everything that's going on. Um, and again, I made it easy on myself. I stuck the atoms on the wedge and the staircase instead of the unshared pairs. Um, but, you know, so you're going to have a bond angle less than 109.5, uh, less than um, probably, about, probably about 105 degrees or something. So it'll be a little bit more tightly squeezed than the other one. But anyway, so I hope that helped looking through those possibilities. Remember that all of that stuff will daisy chain together for bigger molecules. So don't be scared of working on a bigger molecule like methanol or like hexane or something like that because you just look at them one atom center at a time. Just like the old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So with that uh, nugget of knowledge, I'll, I'll bid you farewell for the day. Thanks for watching and have a great day.